Do you absolutely love Dream? Are you 12 years old? Or are you 14 years old and absolutely hate him and call him Nightmare? Either way you land, you're in good company because a lot of people love Dream and a lot of people hate him. They love to hate him, quite literally. If you don't know who Dream is, he's this guy. Minecraft YouTuber, wears a mask, makes super cringe music. He's obnoxious, pretty much insufferable nowadays. This is a tough one. I can't breathe when you're not there. And he's had the most allegations of any creator I've ever seen on any platform ever thrown at him over the last couple years, and especially the last few months. The stuff that has come out against him over the last couple years is of varying levels of severity. He's sought to offer explanations to explain away the allegations many different times or just trying to disprove certain things. But after recent dramas and controversies have come to light, Dream decided to go scorched earth on haters. Remember the Nicholas Cantu thing, Gumball? You don't understand that you're talking to like a Michelangelo of my time, right? Like I'm a genius, Albert Einstein level history bookmaker. Gumball versus Dream, this moment, epic thing. So funny, dude. I love the internet. POV. Fucking Nicholas Cantu is throwing around slurs. And we have a, a Homelander moment from, from the boys. You know the boys? Homelander. <laughs> All right, guys. Big dream updates here. Okay. It's important to note that this is recorded as an update after I recorded the main sections of the video. I recorded the main sections of the video, which you're about to watch. A lot of the debunking that Dream does in his video is based on identities of people that are private, right? So it's like, trust me, bro, versus trust me, bro. And I will say he did a very good job, in my opinion, at uh, putting this video together. It still feels strange, the whole thing, Dreamathy and his uh, diorama of art. For the sake of integrity, I reached out to Dream. I tried to. I reached out to his wrong account. He actually reached out to me with the correct account, which I thought was hilarious. He did that this morning and I asked him a bunch of questions and he answered them, I think, in a very honest and clear and thoughtful way. What exactly did I ask him? Well, I asked for character references uh, for some of the people that he used to debunk the allegations. For example, I learned about the professor who wrote the paper supporting Dream Speedrun. That's a major part of this whole thing. Why was he the best fit for independently investigating the speedrun? What was his thought process for choosing this guy to uh, sort of retort against all these people accusing him of this? I asked him about Manitreed's ex-girlfriend. He shared a very little, all right? He did share some proof with me, which I greatly appreciate. Appreciate, but once again, I need to, to keep everything private about all of this stuff because I don't want any of these people to be doxxed or abused. But those two individual sources that Dream provided were absolutely 100% legit. And I obviously can't show that. So it's just another trust me, bro. But those two questions were genuinely answered by Dream himself, reaching out to me, someone he, he's never spoken to ever. And I reached out to him for, for comment. And you know, this is a, a good sign in my opinion, a plus for Dream. I also asked about his Snapchat and fan art page manager. I learned who she was, what her responsibilities were, how long she was a friend of Dreams before she took over the accounts, how much time a day she spent scrolling, etc. how many posts she interacted with, how many times he had to step in to ask her to delete or edit or even unlike a post. He was very clear with all of this information. I greatly appreciate that. But once again, a lot of it is very private, so I cannot share it because I don't want her to get destroyed. Also asked about the prior Snapchat manager in 2020, the person who ran the Snapchat before the current one. The claims were verified that she ran the account and she did so responsibly. Absolutely 100% verified. Beyond just Dream saying, trust me, bro, which he didn't literally say that. You guys know what I mean. The main sort of question which I expressed great interest in and wanting answered after recording the, the final chunk of this video was who are the other people in the car with Nicholas Cannon? To because that's like the biggest sort of event that's happened recently. And uh, there were two other people, a guy and a girl. A guy was on Dream's right, a girl was on his left. They're both small content creators that he had met at a person's party 
okay dream said he had no contact with these people after that night other than when they messaged him to say that nicholas was lying they asked to remain completely anonymous and they weren't even comfortable with nicholas Cantu knowing that they were the ones recording because he was threatening them legally and i have a video of all these texts and everything corroborating all this he said he would pay their legal fees if he sued them and that's why they sent so yeah it's legit i mean it's it's that aspect of this entire thing is completely legit dream is not in the wrong versus Nicholas Cantu. He also sent videos of Snapchat messages and stuff w from the, the original people in communication, mandatory. I mean, there's a lot of corroboration here. All in all, this is a good response, okay? I still think there are some inaccuracies and things that are gonna come out, but to sort of double down on what I just said, there are actual real evidence of people owning up to their mistakes since Dream's video came out. For example, the Burner22 account, one of the main parts of this entire video, completely deleted. Cheesecat25, someone spreading lies about Dream, completely deleted. Poiglone, completely deleted. Dream even pinned a comment to his video. The Burner account, Burner22, tweeted that they were unsure about the reliability of their claim after seeing my video, and then as of 4 p.m. EST time, deactivated their entire account. I'm assuming this is their only further comment. And that was one of the most viral of all allegations against Dream. So I, I really implore you guys to think as rationally as possible and not use sort of preconceived biases and notions uh to to sort of go through this i know that i don't like minecraft youtubers and i think a lot of content creators are cringe i think i'm my content's ass and terrible very different person in real life than i am uh on the well, i'm very similar in terms of my <laughs> personality but like i don't give a fuck do you know what i mean do you know what i'm saying for the sake of all this and hopefully doing what is right, I think you guys should know my opinion and that is this is uh, f legit. I mean, this is legit. It's from the horse's mouth backed up by evidence that I unfortunately cannot show to respect people's privacy. I'm not going to leak anything. I'm excited to see how this unfolds and hopefully the truth shall prevail. By the way, if I got anything wrong or if you guys have proof of anything, please comment down below. This is a massive mammoth of a video and a mammoth of a situation and there's a lot of moving parts and it's difficult to, uh, you know, kind of piece everything together, especially during the holidays. It's, it's just the confusing. I'm also moving and shit. So this is a bad time for this to Bad time for this to happen, but there are some inconsistencies and things that don't add up, but those will uh, uh, be built upon in the future, I'm sure. And I'm sure everything will become 100% transparent soon enough. Let me know if I'm blatantly missing anything or if there's anything new that's coming out down in the comments below and enjoy the rest of the video, please. dream has been going through a rough time lately. He's had a bad couple months. Everyone seems to hate him on the internet at this point. And he decided to release an extremely long video to address all the controversy that he's gone through over the past few years while providing as much evidence as he possibly can to prove the false nature of all the allegations against him. In his video, at the same time trying to dismantle the claims against him, he tries to highlight a double standard when it specifically comes to him being the bad guy, being this punching bag for the internet. For example, it seems that people willfully ignore evidence vindicating Dream due to their pre-existing bias against him because they want and or need Dream to be the bad guy. Those same people will take any evidence against him as fact, no matter how shoddy or full of holes it may be. Most of the evidence against Dream, honestly, is just, it, none of it would ever hold up in court. It's just like fun internet drama that you can be like, oh yeah, this burner account posted it. Haha, look at Dream, he is, he is cringe. Let's celebrate his downfall. There's a fly flying around me. I think I'm rotting. Dream tries to accomplish these goals of dismantling 100% of everything in one video. And in doing so, he has to go into details of his life that he claims he prefers he would never have had to go into. In this video, I'm gonna be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past, I go into controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. It will get uncomfortable. I will get into details of my life that you probably don't wanna hear and I don't particularly wanna share either, but it feels necessary given the circumstances and honesty and truth is my top priority. At the top of the video, there's a few things that have jumped out to me that I think are sort of strange and I don't, I don't know exactly what the point of them uh, would be to include in the video or the specific way of going about the video. I, it, I guess it makes sense, but at the same time, it uh, contributes to my existing anti-dream bias. I'm not an extreme dream hater, but I do think he is very cringe. I've gotta say, I do think he is very cringe. I'm cringe. I think the main thing I don't like about dream is that he just really likes himself a lot. And I think when people think that they're really hot and they are men. And they're both boys. It bothers me. 
like when, when dudes like are checking themselves out, you know, it makes me want to just like, like hurt them. Does that make sense? I don't know. The things that jumped out to me as strange are as follows. This isn't your typical apology video or video that seeks to address rumors and allegation clean and cut. For example, Quite's video about his whole fucking fiasco that happened a few months ago. It's not Dream talking to the camera with a rough idea of what he wants to say. It's an incredibly high produced and very edited, visually engaging video picture fucking art diorama, even with background music to emphasize tone and evoke emotion uh, from the viewer. I think in the context, it feels manipulative. I think this sort of thing is fairly candid in nature, but this is just from the top. This is just my initial reactions to what I'm watching here. It seems a bit insincere. It seems like a classic YouTuber mistake. Although this kind of changes throughout the video, it makes more sense. This thing takes on a life of its own. It is a mammoth of a video. And you see the video is an hour and a half long. It has to be engaging to the viewer. It has to be a good, solid thing that people are going to want to watch and uh, and pull from, et cetera. Plus with the editing and production, it could potentially help people get a more full understanding of Dream's evidence. This is sort of what he says in the description of his video. See what his topics are not dumb. These lies will spend hundreds of millions. I can only do my best to make sure the tooth can be consumed as easily as possible. This guy's like the Jeff Bezos of YouTube. He's so concerned with the truth. Also, people always ask about this kind of stuff. The video is monetized, but in the video, he states the proceeds will be going to the Joyful Heart Foundation. Um, Luda, can you double check this for me? He did the face leak thing, and it turns out he was that, that kid. He lied about that. He was the little uh, the little chubby kid from, from Florida. He said that he lied about this not being him out of embarrassment because he didn't want to uh, no longer be anonymous until he was ready to no longer be anonymous. He wanted his face revealed to be his own thing that he could sort of pull off and then, and then uh, I guess, profit from it a lot. I'm not sure. The face leak photo was me. Of course, it's from when I was really young and I've lost a lot of weight since then. And it wasn't at all representative of what I look like now but it was me. Obviously, I said many times that it wasn't, and a lot of people have and still do use that against me to say that I'm dishonest. But the reason I lied about that is because of the face reveal. I'd been planning the face reveal for years. I sacrificed so much by staying inside and avoiding cameras for so long. I mean, I had covers on all my windows, and even to go to the dentist, I left hiding in the back of a car and went to a different state. Yes, I was paranoid. I wasn't going to let anyone take that moment away from me. Whatever I had to do to make sure that moment was suspenseful and exciting, I'm sure I would have done. It was a big deal. I mean, his face reveal was a huge thing. He says he wasn't ashamed of how big he used to be, uh, but he is also proud of his weight loss journey. He even showed pictures of when he was much heavier. He looks good. He looks like he, he really turned his life around, um, and it's pretty impressive. I'm very proud of my weight loss story, and I was never ashamed about it at all. I think that it's very encouraging to see people accomplish weight loss. I did it all naturally. I lost hundreds of pounds. You have not seen me at my heaviest, and it's one of those things that I think is very encouraging to others. I love inspiring people, so it's a story I'm sure I'll tell in the future. But in that moment, it was not the right time to tell it. Now, because of this lie, people use this as a basis for, uh, you know, reasoning as to why he has been a liar in the past. He has a track record of dishonesty. It's evidence that Dream cannot be trusted, which that's not really fair. I mean, it makes sense. Like, this is a valid explanation, in my opinion. Now we have the speed run fraud. He also lied about this and points to this as another frequently pulled example that people use of him being dishonest to disprove him for everything that he stands for and just call him untrustworthy. He says it was an accident. He apologizes about the mod thing. This is all fucking old news. He apologized for lashing out and acting like a baby, which he did absolutely act like a massive baby. I'm gonna be pretty concise with this one because it's been covered a million times and most of you are probably pretty sick of hearing about it, but it's still really important to talk about. It's one of the most frequent reasons people point to as to why not to trust me. I did unintentionally cheat on a speedrun that I officially submitted to the leaderboards in 2020 and the speedrun mods were completely in the right for taking it down. I was using a disallowed mod for about a week on my live streams when a new version of Minecraft came out and I was unaware that this mod existed. When I was defending myself, I didn't know that I'd been using the mod and it's a really complicated and lengthy explanation of how it's very reasonable that I didn't know that I had the mod. I'm still fully responsible for my behavior back then towards the moderators, regardless of my intentions. And I did act like a little baby and caused the majority of the problems myself. So I'm sorry, regardless of if you believe me or if you think that I'm being dishonest, since this all happened over three years ago, a lot has changed since and I've done my best to move forward and grow as a person. He was completely unaware of the altered drop rates and trades Dude, what? That's just like absurd. But he used a very effective way to defend himself, in my opinion, which is by using Carl Jopp's video in which Carl did a deep dive 
researching Dream's cheating scandal, and even he, Carl, found that he believed Dream and, and believed that it was, in fact, done in, unintentionally. In conjunction with all of the evidence I've seen, I believe the essence of what Dream was claiming in his paste bin was probably true. In my opinion, it is definitely more likely that he really didn't know his drop rates and barter rates were modified. Was it intentional? And I do believe that it probably wasn't. And to speak to Carl even further, there's the whole Open Hand Foundation investigation that's been happening recently with him and Mudahar and Gerard the Completionist. And if you believe that he's honest in that investigation, which I do, I think there's no reason to question his integrity in regard to Dream. People who have done way more research than me and you believe that it was done unintentionally. So we have two lies that are in part explained away. To just sort of add self-validation to the cheating scandal, he says he apologized to the moderators both publicly and privately. He removed his speedrun times, even the ones that weren't related to his scandal. He hasn't even speedrun since then. It's been over three years. He also donated $50,000 to the speedrun community. Hey man, you can't buy them. They're, they're, they're very tough people. He even talked about the fucking astrophysicist he hired to vindicate him. That is so ridiculous, bro. Yeah, that's right. He, he hired an astrophysicist to vindicate him over a Minecraft speedrunning scandal. What world do we live in? I didn't hire a fake astrophysicist to defend me, which is also commonly said. Knowing nothing about math, but fully believing in my innocence at the time, given the accusation was purely based on math, I used a website for math freelancers and reached out directly to a highly qualified professor that said they'd be willing to help me. They even made one of their conditions before agreeing that no matter what their conclusion was, I had to publish their results, even if their conclusion was that I was guilty. I agreed to this. Dream briefly explained the situation, and the expert agreed to help. The expert provided Dream with a few terms, one of them being that Dream post the results no matter the outcome. Obviously, the report ended up getting ripped to shreds, but I had no idea that would be the case. I knew absolutely nothing about math, and I fully believed in my innocence. So when a highly qualified third party was agreeing with me, it made me even more confident and bold. The astrophysicist report ended up just being massive shit. The dude didn't understand Minecraft at all. He got completely torn to pieces. To double down on transparency though, Dream included screenshots of every email that he sent between himself and the professor who did the third party analysis of his speed run. 10 screenshots, 20 plus emails, it's kind of epic. There was many factors as to why the report ended up being bad, partially due to the public pressure and it being rushed, partially due to them not knowing as much about Minecraft as the mod team did. But regardless, I didn't bribe or make up a fake astrophysicist, which is something people frequently say. The speedrun mod team and many other parties independently verified their credentials and the fact that they exist. I also put way more information in the description on this, just for transparency's sake, including proof about the professor, all of my emails to them, and even screenshots of messages that I never provided in the past. I think that's really important to clear up because it's used very, very frequently to say, if he will go as far as to make up a fake astrophysicist to lie, how far will he go with other lies? And I would just like to point out that even though I didn't lie, lying about a Minecraft speedrun is very different than lying about very serious allegations. And at this point, I believe that, that he unintentionally cheated in the speedrun thing. I don't really give a fuck about that. That does not make me dislike him. And I also do not care about the, the lying about being a chubby child thing. That makes sense too. This was one of the first more serious allegations that Dream addresses in his video. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is a pretty big one that you might not have heard about, but it's a pretty important one, Manitreed. Housing an abuser, Dream. A while ago, housed a person named Manitreed, who was accused of being an abuser. And then Dream was accused of housing him and defending him. Both of those things were true, but he gives his context and reasonings as to why he did those things. Manitreed was a childhood friend of Dream, even though he denied it at the time. He is honest about it now. He added him to the SMP. Dream was still anonymous at the time, so Manitreed also needed to stay anonymous to protect Dream's identity and privacy. Manitreed had issues in 2020, like homelessness. Dream offered to help him. Manitreed lived with him. He paid for his groceries. He came up with his name. He brought him onto the SMP server, essentially handing him the fucking Willy Wonka golden ticket of just easy YouTube money. He even built his social medias. He seems like a pretty nice friend, honestly. I wish, I wish he would have done that for me, to be honest. The big problem here is that Dream's knee-jerk reaction was to defend his friend, and he even called people gullible for believing these allegations. The allegations also claim that Dream knew about it and was hiding it intentionally, although Dream does offer screenshots showing that the offense happened just over a year before Dream brought Manitreed into his home or even onto the server. So the uh, actual bad thing the allegations refer to, the offense, happened before Dream 
How's the man? We can see it here. After I confronted Manatreet in real life, he claimed that he wasn't an abuser, that he had just had an altercation with another guy, and that his ex-girlfriend got in the middle of it. He claimed that he never hit her, that he had just caught her cheating and was fighting the guy that she was cheating with, that the cops got called, and that he got arrested. This is just what he said. This altercation would have taken place around a year before he moved in with us, and I had no knowledge of it. People thought that domestic violence took place when he lived with us because my address was on a court document of his, but that was far after when he was on probation and had to tell the court where he currently lived. He also lied to us and told us that he was on probation for smoking weed in order to not have us question anything suspicious related to it. And bro lost a lifelong friend because of all this. Makes sense. Good, good, good. Not a good dude. Now my favorite part of the dream lore, thirst traps. <sighs> This is a controversy that's very serious, all right guys? He allegedly posts thirst traps for underage fans. This is true, very bad. At the start of him addressing these allegations, there's so many fucking allegations, by the way, this is absurd. I cannot imagine having this many allegations. What is he, this has gotta be the first time in history someone has been so hated by a, a, such a large group of people for just a bunch of shit that's like, never existed before now in the modern internet era. But yeah, I guess it has never existed yet. It's, this is the first time this has ever happened though. At the beginning of him addressing this, he asks for people to give him the benefit of the doubt, which is an interesting thing to do in the very beginning of uh, trying to uh, exonerate yourself from something bad. Hey man, give me the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna play a clip from Moist Critical who talked about the allegations pretty neutrally to his credit. But while talking about them, he said this. Dream's audience has always been on the younger side of things and yet Dream constantly engages with them in very inappropriate ways, such as like posting thirst traps. He does post thirst traps, even knowing that his fans are children. So when these claims come out, I think a lot of people start to take them at face value because they're like, oh, that, that sounds like the dream that I know. Uh, you know, this sounds like something dream might do, so it's probably true. Even though right now a lot of the evidence backing it up isn't the strongest. Now, before I talk about this, I just want to ask that if you're watching this and you share the same opinion, try and give me the benefit of doubt. Genuinely listen to what I have to say and discard your preconceived biases. Because yeah, if you think someone's creepy and then they're accused of being a creep, it clearly changes how you think. So I'm gonna break down multiple things that Charlie said because I respect him. I respect his opinion. I think he's a super reasonable guy and I think he's an awesome content creator. One of the things that he said is that I post creepy pictures and thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. So that's the first thing I'm gonna talk about. The example that he gives is that if you think he's a creep and someone says that he's been creepy, then you're more inclined to believe the information based on your preconceived notion of his character, uh, which is pretty elementary and makes sense. Since his face has only been revealed for a year, he says he can show essentially every photo he's ever posted online, which is interesting because they just start scrolling by and he shows above. There's mostly spam posts, shit that he uploaded to Snapchat. Snapchat places an ad every six photos or so and encourages him to post a hundred plus photos a day. What the, what the? How's that even possible? He says that this allows for one out of, let's say, 1,000 photos of him to be taken out of context and to be twisted. He uses the Dream Was Talon account as an example of one popular account who did this and twisted his, his good images, his innocuous pics. This guy said, name a prettier man than me. You can't. And it looks like Dream, right? It looks like him. I saw this shit and I was like, man, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's, Going off the deep end. This is some funny shit. He then said, bark for me. I thought that was real. I'm gonna be honest. I thought that was real. I thought that was legit. I was like, man, this guy, okay, this is awesome. There was a bunch of people who actually thought that this account was real and posts like this reinforced the idea uh, for people who already hated Dream in their heads uh, about him being a creep and just made people hate him more. Dream also says that whenever his accounts like fan art uh, or like posts, 99% of the time that is a person that he's hired to run that fan art Twitter page and his Snapchat doing that and interacting with people. I mean, I hardly even log into my Snapchat myself and even have someone else completely run the account because there's a manager account feature where I can just post from my personal snap and never even see any of the messages. I also sometimes have people say that I'm weird because of fan art account likes from my fan art account. So I just want to clarify, I'm not the one behind 99% of the likes. I've never made that public because it is beneficial for artists for people to think that it's me every time. But again, when it's being used against me to say I'm creepy, I have to clarify. Hi, so I've ran Dream's public Snapchat since January 20. 22. There's nothing weird and he doesn't really even log into it. Um, I also run his fan art account and have been since January 2022 as well. I'm good friends with Dream and the Dream team, so he thought I'd be a good pick to run it. She says she mainly likes the stuff that she finds silly or creative, 
She laughs a lot since she knows Dream and his friends, and then she engages with this stuff based upon her relationship with these creators. She doesn't think that it should be used to paint Dream as a creepy guy and also doesn't support NSFW art from or of minors. I fucking hope not. Before this person ran Dream's Snapchat and fan art accounts, there was another person who ran them in 2020 for about a year, and that person also shares the same sentiment, although later in the video. Part of the justification for the reason that he posts a lot of the images and strange thirst trap videos that he does post, he claims it's satirical, uh, or he's just being dumb, or he's being self-deprecating. He's being quirky. Really, guys, he's being fucking quirky. A lot of my videos before I did Minecraft challenges were satire videos, and I still post a lot of satire. A perfect example of this is my unface reveal. I posted a video on my channel where I unrevealed my face. It's a satire video. I have my two best friends burst down my door, tell me that I'm ugly and to put my mask back on, which I agree with, make a professional mask, and then go through the McDonald's drive through with it on, while saying that I'm never taking it off ever again. The number of people that took this seriously was in the tens of millions. People see the headline, assume that sounds like something that cringe guy would do, and then it's history. And the same thing happens with my TikToks. He claims he's never posted anything online that is remotely a thirst trap. This image apparently gets spread a lot of him <laughs> pretending to be dead. People think it's a thirst trap or something. It's insanely cringe, but it is not what it is portrayed as. We've been duped. It seems like he's just misunderstood, guys. He's just misunderstood. He's the most misunderstood creator of all time. That's if we give him the benefit of the doubt. Do you think there's mischaracterization of his character? Do you think what people are saying is accurate? Do you think people intentionally misrepresent him? I definitely think they do. And it seems like that is something to consider from this point on because I've seen a lot of stuff that I thought he actually posted that it doesn't seem like he did. I mean, like the singing video, that's a thirst trap though. The fucking singing video where he's singing in the shit, that's, a, that's, a, that's like a thirst trap. I feel like that's a thirst trap, right? Isn't that a thirst? That's like, why would you, cause he's not like good or anything. Also he's based in Winfield, he got his dog, oh my God, it's Smith and Wesson. Put it in the fire, burn it, lint a piece of shit. Thirst traps. Honestly, one of the main reasons I didn't like Dream cause he, I, he seems incredibly self-obsessed in the way that he kind of dresses, the clothes that he wears. He's obviously just a different type of person, uh, someone that I would never want to associate with in any world, but at the same time, I'm open to the possibility that he's been incredibly misrepresented. I'm not in his community at all. I don't watch Minecraft stuff. I'm an old man. It's possible this is a big stink fest. And by the way, this is a massive deal. This is a crazy thing that's happening right now. Do you think that's valid though? That's what I wanna know. I wanna, th I wanna know what you guys think. The next thing, Dream being weird. Dream highlights a couple of primary examples used against him to showcase him being strange or weird. One time he called his fans kittens before Discord kittens had really become a popular meme. Me calling my fan base kittens. Now this was a stupid tweet. If I could go back, never would have tweeted it. I completely understand that without knowing my intentions or what I actually meant, it could seem super weird. The whole Discord kittens meme wasn't as big yet. And I just tweet so much, I just wasn't really thinking. It came out horribly and I will never live this down. It is still something that my friends make fun of me for to this day. He apparently did this to represent how he can love his fans, but it's sort of different from the way he loves family or friends. It didn't age well. It's really strange, like comparing humans, to, like these are people that are watching these videos. The kittens to me just doesn't really make any sense because like a kitten is like a little thing. It's like a little sort of almost like an object and you, I don't really, I mean, I don't know, right? Like that's not, People aren't hit. I don't. I don't get that very much. Maybe I'm autistic. I don't know. His intent was never to be creepy or weird, though. He claims he compares it to people who say, "I love dogs" or "I love cats," but instead he says, "I love my fans." I I love my fans, and I like to learn about them as individuals. And I I do not try to facilitate parasocial relationships. I'm just a regular guy. If I had to choose between a kitten or a random person that watches my videos, I would choose a random person that watches my videos because that is a human being with like a life that is going out of their way to contribute to my life in some way and hopefully get something out of it. Like I, I think this is a fairly special thing that we're all uh, fortunate enough to do. I don't see you guys as kittens or animals. That seems like a bad comparison. Another example of some shit that got blown up of him being a weirdo is when he sold a dream wristband that had a built-in flash drive with a bunch of shit on it. For a motherfucker that is incredibly parasocial, I mean, this is like the most parasocial merch I've ever seen in my entire life in a weird, it has childhood email. What the f 
does that mean? Gaming screenshots, pictures from his epic camera, memes he saved, baby photos, man. That's fucking weird. That's epically creep to BH. If you just say Dream is selling baby pictures, it seems extremely strange. He clarifies his motivations for it, and they sound reasonable and not weird uh, after hearing him speak about it, but on the I feel like it's still inappropriate and weird. He wanted to make a unique piece of merch. He compared it to a biography. He's a fucking 20 year old dude though. I, it's kind of nonsensical. One of the final points he makes to try and dissuade the notion that he is a thirst trapper or a person that posts weird fucking strange shit is comparing himself to Charlie, Moist Critical, one of my friends. He says that if he posted the images that Charlie has posted on his social medias, he'd be called a predator. And I mean, same for me. I've posted some really strange shit on my social medias as well. He says they post very similar photos. I think Charlie's audience is, of course, much older than mine. But if I posted photos like these, which to be clear, if I was ripped as hell like Charlie, I would 100%. It would be made out to be predatory because it's me when it's not at all. And that same standard isn't applied to TikTok stars or really anyone else but me, just because I'm the Minecraft guy. A lot of the photos me and Charlie have posted are actually really similar. It's just people cherry picking goofy photos of mine and then making them out to be weird. When it's just me posting random photos, because that's literally part of our job. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. I can see the point he's trying to make, but it's not the same at all. This is not the same. It's just not the same as you guys have completely different audiences. Charlie doesn't call his fans kittens. Uh, or say that he loves them like dogs. Charlie has an older audience and makes much more disturbing content in general, not for children. He's literally done like no reviews and stuff. And like, I mean, it's just not even, it's total apples and oranges. This is a bad point, I think. He also says that people call him creepy or weird for even interacting with fans in the first place, which I kind of get that. Because why not? I mean, why wouldn't you interact with fans in some kind of, or, or viewers, fans is kind of a stupid word. I mean, they're like the whole reason that you are at the point. Like one of the cool things about people like, uh, let's say Gordon Ramsay is you hear stories of him or Kurt Russell, you hear stories of them interacting with people in public and they're like, oh man, he's a great dude. I met him, you know, and he was just like a regular guy. That's kind of awesome. I don't think it's just naturally weird for people to interact with, with fans. Maybe it is if they're like children and that could be the case for Dream because he makes Minecraft videos and he has a uh, rabid army of little um, babies online. One thing that I can heavily relate with from Dream is when he says he's had fans become friends from different interactions that uh, he's had with people. I can relate to this 100%. My editor, Tara, since 2019 has been like my main employee. She started off by joining my Discord that I created. I had a public Discord. I got another dude living in my house right now. Um, I met him on Discord, Michael. He watched my videos and like, it's just, I'm not like this God, I'm a YouTuber, bro. It's not that fucking serious. It's like, there's not, it's not that serious. <laughs> like, to be fair, all the fans that I interacted with were all adults of my age who I, you know, brought into my fold and actually legitimately became friends with. I think that's an important <laughs> difference to make. Or maybe not difference. I don't know if he's like befriending children or whatever. That's what people say. I don't, I don't know if that's true. I don't think it's true. It's just YouTube. I think fans is like a bad word. I've incorporated a lot of that energy, that like-minded energy into stuff that I've done. Sour Boys, for example, on my YouTube channel, all of my employees are people who are familiar with YouTube in some form or another. Uh, there's also some big projects on the horizon that involve people who I found by, you know, putting out the bat signal on my, on, on my social medias. I'm a person, they are just people. So I'm on dream side for that one. Then we get to the Amanda grooming allegations. This one, he dives into great detail to try and dismantle and prove as false. A person named Amanda came out in October of 2022 claiming that dream groomed her. This all started back in September, 2020 when his channel was substantially smaller. He provides a screenshot of his following at the time. A lot of the allegations here hinge on DMs between the two of them, dream and Amanda, which dream shows evidence of Amanda deleting messages and then provides a transcript of all of their DMs he could download outside of the ones that were deleted beforehand. He has a paste bin in the description of his video. Second allegation came out soon after the first and said that the first allegation was why they were sharing their story. It was from a girl that claimed that when she was 17, we inappropriately messaged. This 
did not happen. Let's get into the details. On September 23rd, 2020, Amanda messaged me from her personal Instagram account, sending a message that was clearly a fan message. She thanked me for saving her life, and I replied to this message. In September of 2020, I was a lot smaller than I am now, so I got a lot less DMs, and I was much more active in like the fan communities and replying to people. And all, all I replied was, oh, thank you for the kind words. And then I also replied, glad to make you smile after she followed up with the message. I put a transcript of every Instagram message that I've ever sent her linked in the description. It might not be every message that she sent me because there's proof that she deleted Instagram messages to me. An old TikTok of hers has messages from me that wasn't in her post with the accusations when she showed our messages, but my transcript tried to include those and piece it together. Looking through the messages, you can see it's pretty innocuous, especially in the very beginning. He's just being nice, responding to someone who appreciates his content. After some exchanges over a few days, Amanda tries to use Dream's knowledge as a creator to build her own steam, even going as far to ask him to play Among Us with her. Very suspicious. Very sus. Dream even takes days to respond sometimes. Amanda, on the other hand, how are you doing, Dream? September 25th, the next day I replied, I'm good, thank you, how are you? Amanda, the same day replied, I'm doing okay, could be better, could be worse, thank you for asking. Amanda replied, how's your kitty doing? I love cats. I replied and said, she's doing amazing. September 28th, so three days later, Amanda said, Dream, I need some advice. I'm trying to become a small streamer on Twitch, but not a single person joins my streams. How do I get an audience? October 2nd, so a few days later, I replied and said, try and play with your friends maybe? Post clips to Reddit and stuff. And then she replied and said, okay, Thank you with the heart. The next day she messaged me again and said, Dream, would you ever consider playing Among Us with me? XD. I guess this was this was during the Among Us craze. We're still in 2020. October 5th, 2020, I replied, maybe, heart. Amanda said, LL, I'll take the maybe. That would be sick. I didn't reply. So this is a month and a little bit later. Amanda said, hi, Dream. And then she sent another message that was deleted after she made the allegations. But we don't know what it was. We only know the last couple characters. And again, we only know it exists because she messed up and included it in an old TikTok of hers. We get a New Year's 2021 and you can really see that Dream is disconnected a bit from the interaction with Amanda. She wishes him a happy belated New Year's Christmas and congratulates him on his accomplishments and hopes to be su as successful as him one day. Then asks what kind of PC he has and he doesn't respond for 11 days and finally says, Thank you. Or T Y even. He didn't even tell her what kind of computer he had. What a fucking asshole, bro. January 5th, Amanda said again. Hi, Dream. I just want to say happy late New Year and Merry Christmas. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished this year. I hope I am fortunate enough one day to be as successful as you. If you could tell me what kind of computer you have, that'd be great. January 16th, so 11 days later, I replied, Thank you. Amanda replied, deleted message, and then part of it was, How are you? The only time that the conversation seemed to be engaging uh, from Dream is when they start talking about music. He was starting to make his own and it's a topic of interest for him. He seemed to get more involved in the conversation here. He gives her a Snapchat to add him so he can share music. He didn't want to DM using Instagram. He wanted to do Snapchat because it's deleted basically immediately. He also shares that he was sharing music snippets with many people. You can see by the date, musical creativity was clearly in the forefront of his mind through these other messages. <sighs> Amanda messaged me again and said, hi. I replied, hi. Amanda said, how are you? I said, decent. How are you? She said, I'm all right. Thank you. Then she said, I heard some snippets of the song you're working on and I really like it. You have a really nice singing voice. I replied on April 14th. Thank you. So that was uh, the next day. Um, she said, you're welcome. And then December 26th, so that, that was like a long time later, she messaged me and said, Merry late Christmas, heart. I didn't reply. Um, January 10th, she messaged me and said, Hi, my Snapchat was banned and I have no friends. How are you? I replied two days later and said, How TF does a Snapchat get banned? Amanda replied and said, I'm pretty sure it's because I posted videos of me smoking, but all my memories from 2014 are gone. So sad. I replied the next day and said, Damn. Dream then defends against the people that are undoubtedly asking why he'd even bother talking with her, saying that she seemed normal friendly and implied strongly that she was overage, even though it doesn't matter because nothing inappropriate happened. You may be wondering at this point, why are you replying to her? You seem clearly disinterested. You're taking days or weeks to reply, and then when you do reply, it's very dry. Well, Instagram has a really stupid feature that makes it so that once you've replied to someone's DMs once, you can't remove their ability to personally message you, unless you block them. You cannot be following them, you can delete them from your inbox, they can still message you and pop up in your notifications. I'm showing an example on screen of my DM continuing to pop up on my alt account, just to show how it works. Obviously, given I replied to Amanda back in 2020 when I had a much smaller community, she was stuck in my inbox for the rest of time. You can temporarily delete someone from your inbox and it deletes all of your message history to them for you, but they can still message you with now a blank DM history. So at one point, wanting her to stop DMing me, I swiped her out of my inbox multiple times. It's actually completely provable that I did do this. I'm showing a video of my Instagram DMs to Amanda now, where they start in December of 2021, much later than her original DMs. Because you can't delete other people's individual messages and you can only delete entire conversations, 
This proves 100% that I was trying to delete her ability to message me in 2021. After he gave Amanda his Snapchat, she claims that they started sexting and did that up until February 10th. So Dream's main defense is that none of this makes sense because of how dry their conversations were and how disengaged he was, you know, at one point to then just a couple days later, them sexting on Snapchat. That's his defense. He also shows that even though this allegedly happened during January, February of 2022, in October, she was defending him during his face reveal. She was also engaging with his other content as well. He's just, you know, she was a part of a community, something like that. He then theorizes that she became bitter and hateful after the face reveal because he wasn't responding to her messages anymore on Instagram or Snapchat. Now let's go over her actual claims in detail. Amanda claims that after I added her on Snapchat on January 17th, 2022, that we started sexting. She showed that her birthday when she would turn 18 is on February 17th, exactly a month later. She claims that we sexted from around the 17th Tenth of January, the day I added her on Snapchat, to the 10th of February, and then that it stopped. She said that while she was still underage, we exchanged nudes. Her evidence of this was two photos of, supposedly me, from after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August and that we planned to meet up and have sex. And I just want to make sure that I blatantly deny this before continuing. None of this is true. And now I'm going into more detail. Now, unfortunately, because she didn't provide any proof of these things, it's difficult to be specific about some of the things she claimed. It's much easier to completely make up that something happened than it is to prove that it never did. Like if I said right now, prove to me 100% that you never sexted a specific person that you've had on Snapchat at any point, it would be impossible to do. But what I can do is lay out all the inconsistencies, talk about the proven lies, the specifics, point out questions that were never asked, and provide all of the evidence that I have. And I believe that luckily, that's way more than enough. So from the 17th to maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were sexting. So even if we say that it started a couple weeks before it stopped, you'd have to believe that every message you've just seen, we went from that to sexting days later in 2022 before my face reveal. Even if you want to give her the maximum benefit of doubt and say that she confused the timeline, she turned 18 on the 17th, one week after she claimed the sexting stopped. So there's not much leeway. Secondly, we can talk about her Twitter. She tweeted out defending me from hate on my face reveal 10 days before the allegations and was liking my tweets, including a subscriber milestone tweet two days before she tweeted her allegations. With the timing of the face reveal and her allegation, my belief is that there was a lot of hate and that it's easy to get spiteful and join in on a hate train. I had ignored multiple of her Instagram DMs and Snapchat messages in recent months, and I had also made a new Snapchat that I didn't add her on. I still used my old Snapchat occasionally, but I just rarely responded. That's my only real explanation for why she flipped so quickly from being publicly positive to me to lying about me, but I guess I'll never really know. And this was after he made a new Snapchat and there was a hate train surrounding him with his face reveal. It was just super easy to jump on on board and go, I hate Dream. Dream sucks, Kong. He sucks. I hate Dream. He also points out that she was asked for Snapchat logs, which are saved, and she didn't ever uh, get them because there was nothing like what she was alleging. Amanda also alleges that they were supposed to meet up for S word and says that he was going to go to her resort, which I don't even know what the f that means. Dream counters this by talking to his mom, who says he only left the house four or five times in 2021. And then October 2022 is when he uploaded his face reveal. Dude even like covered himself up with a fucking blanket to leave and it's she wouldn't open the garage to drive. He wouldn't come out of the blanket until they hit the freeway. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, obviously your mom's gonna wanna protect your boy. This is not a good example. It's not a good, not a good character witness, to be honest. Probably wouldn't stand up in a court of law, but some might even speculate she'd be willing to lie to protect her young boy, but it doesn't feel disingenuous to me. Then Dream highlights a lot of inconsistencies in what Amanda would say as well, like claiming she was going to lie about being 18, but not doing it, claiming that she would post proof, but not doing it, and then saying that while she was typing, Dream was deleting her DMs too. Uh, and then he shows that you can't delete the other person's DMs, which is... True, you can't, that doesn't make any sense. She also said that she was gonna lie and tell me that she was 18, but that she changed her mind, I guess. So I was going to lie and tell him I was 18. She said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was 17 and that I still sexed her tomorrow. But I didn't, and that proof will come out tomorrow. And guess what? She never posted proof because this never happened. She tweeted out thanking people for all the support and claimed at the end that I deleted our DMs right as she tweeted this and specifically said my end too, which means her DMs too. Well, I just want to point out that this is impossible. There's not a single mainstream social media platform that lets you delete both people's messages. And we only had each other on Instagram and Snapchat where you can't do that on either. She claimed that she was laughing and was going to prove people wrong with pictures of my penis, to which again, 
never happened. That's true, you can't just like delete someone's DMs. That isn't how it fucking work. The biggest thing she did is threatening to contact the police and then posting a picture the next day of her inside a police station. Dream got his legal team to track down the police station in the photo and they found out that nothing was ever reported or that there was no evidence reported that met the standard of proof to have an actual case built. Except the pictures that she posted were from a second phone, meaning there was no risk of me knowing. She was taking pictures of compliments from a second phone, but has no evidence of anything sexual, has no evidence of us planning to meet up and have sex, apparently from after these pictures were secretly taken, has no evidence of a singular inappropriate message from me or her, or even anything at all that isn't a story reply from Snapchat's story page of all your friends. What's more likely? So then we get to the more recent shit with Dream versus Gumball. We've come such a long way. This all happened on September 23rd, 2022. Bro went to a party, Nicholas Cantu was there. He was drunk, he was being aggressive. On FaceTime, he hit Dream while talking to his friends on the FaceTime. Everyone decided to leave the party and get into an Uber. Gumball decided to join them in the Uber he sat up front. Dream shrugged off the aggressiveness and punch earlier and then thought that that was probably the worst that could happen. Gumball lost his phone on the freeway somehow and got out while it was dark. The police show up, told him to get back in the car. Gumball then acts like a obnoxious idiot and asked the police if they want to con conduct a sobriety test. The Uber driver convinced him to leave and helped him not get arrested for being drunk and underage and probably having a fake ID in all honesty. That shit's rampant. In Gumball's drunken state, he got mad at the Uber driver and called him a re then said that he had Down syndrome and asked him how far he got in his education. This guy is crazy by the way. Gumball, like, both of these people are very unlikable dream and Gumball, but it is crazy that everyone loves Gumball after this. Like, it's insane. It's insane, bro. Of course, I started to get involved and argue with Nick, defending the Uber driver, and Nick did not like that at all. Either you're gonna be paralyzed or you're gonna be dead. Like, I'm serious. Okay, man. Dream explains that someone he had just met was in the car with him recording and, and Nicholas Cantu said he was grateful someone was recording and he says to hit like and subscribe. By the way, hit like and subscribe. The next day, Nicholas DM Dream and apologized for his nasty, rotten, disgusting behavior. We've seen these DMs before. You guys have seen, he says he's sorry for the false allegations and acting the way that he did because he's tweeted shit in the past and he's so but you can watch my other video about that if you want. Dream says that he really didn't forgive him, but he wanted to move on and he felt bad because he knows how child stars are treated in the industry and he thought it would he would just better himself later on. Nicholas would become a better person later on. The next day, Nicholas sent me a very nice DM saying that he was sorry for hitting me, that he was having a really rough night and that he was high and drunk and said that he was sorry for spreading false allegations that he knew nothing about, saying that he recognized it could ruin people's lives. He complimented me, called me humble, grounded, and a good human. I didn't accept this apology, but I, I moved on and honestly, I felt kind of bad for him. I recognized that he was once a child actor and I feel like there's a lot of bad stuff in that industry. So I felt a little bit of sympathy. I hoped he would just learn from the mistakes he made that night and move on. But then of course, Nicholas started tweeting, spreading the same lies about me that he had already apologized for spreading and recognized could ruin people's lives. Later on, Dream asked the other person in the car to send them the videos and proof to defend his side of the story but they said that Nicholas was threatening them. He eventually got the videos and that's the shit that we saw on Twitter recently of Nick acting insane and, and you know, I mean, he needs help, like genuinely, bro needs help or drink less, I'm not sure. So we have video proof there of Nicholas being a piece of shit. Uh, people also thought that the texts that Dream had between him and the Uber driver were fake. So we got in contact with the Uber driver that night and interviewed him, who is the Uber driver, who is actually one of the highest rated Uber drivers in Texas, which is really cool, came to give his side of what actually happened. He said Nick was acting crazy, dropped his phone, started talking to a cop in a rude manner. Terrell didn't want anyone to go to jail, but Nicholas started fucking spouting shit about IQ and saying he was better. This is just, it's such gross behavior, dude. I really do not like this kid. The Uber driver said that the majority of stuff didn't even make it on the tape, it was never released. Nicholas said that everyone we be, would be forgotten as billions of particles of sand while he would be a statue erected in gold. Darrell said he was very creative for that. <laughs> it's just funny as You're going to jail. I'm trying to save you from going to jail because I don't want nobody to go to jail, period. He kept saying something about like IQ. Like he felt like he was better. And I was like, nobody cares about your IQ. There's a lot of people with high IQs in jail right now. So what are you gonna tell him? You're gonna talk to him and say that you're a child star while you're in jail? So I was like, I'm trying to help you out. I don't want you to go to jail, even after you're acting crazy and wild, which most Uber drivers would have left you. 
You never said anything negative towards him while he was saying all this stuff. Majority of the stuff didn't make it on the tape. Dream then asks if he tipped him that night. He said no, and he doesn't understand why he would lie about something like that. Nicholas tipping the, the Uber driver, by the way. That's some shit he said that he did. The Uber driver then says that Dream was nothing but respectful the moment he stepped into the car. Man, it was an eventful night. I don't know why a lot of people think that you were the one that was doing all these things and making all this stuff up and you wanted to do all this. I was like, he was the one that was trying to stop everything the most. He says that these are the straight up facts. And quite frankly, I believe this shit. This makes sense, totally makes sense. The Uber driver thing. I mean, in this situation, absolutely. The party who I like most in a vacuum without any preconceived notions is Dream. He's not doing anything wrong. Nicholas is being an asshole. If you take everything else, throw it away and you have just this, it's very clearly on the side of Dream here. So, so far with this narrative, we have Dream coming ahead uh, pretty hardcore. Then Dream, uh, he, he addresses the moaning allegations. It was a video from another phone of a Snapchat being opened, supposedly from Dream, that had moaning in the background and a very sexual caption. They also attached screenshots of Discord DMs between anonymous people, who were claimed to be two friends of Dream's, and said it was them discussing me having did a minor. In these screenshots, they say that I was confronted about it and that I admitted it. I've shown you every piece of evidence they posted without changes, and I've mentioned everything that they've claimed. Now, just to reiterate, this is not true. Every piece of evidence is either out of context, edited, blatantly lied about, or presented in a very disingenuous way. This allegation was not from a victim and was on a burner account. The anonymous account claims that Dream groomed someone named Jamie and incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago. He posted a vid claiming that it was a minor, never showed evidence of that, Crop context from screenshots. Lydon said that they were from him. Lydon said that the victim gave him permission and caused more harassment to Jamie. And on top of all of that, the Snapchat isn't even real. The video was opened without being tapped, and that's just how Snapchats worked. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger. You can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. That one's hilarious. The moaning shit, that's so funny. Uh, it is unfortunate that he's getting drugged for that because it's so clearly fake and just fabricated and not real. But that that one's the, the, having moaning allegations is very funny to me. Bro was allegedly moaning. The burner account also stated that they reported Dream to the authorities of his local police department. Uh, he called a bunch of police departments and asked for them to search the database for reports of him, and there is none. He couldn't find a single report of himself, not even a civil case. Therefore, everyone has lied who claims to report him. He then states, if you don't believe him, he has Jamie give her own statement. So I found out who was anonymous in these messages, and let's hear what they have to say. These screenshots are extremely out of context and used disingenuously to tell a story about Dream that isn't true at all. I haven't spoken to Dream in a very long time, but to my knowledge, he has not interacted with underage fans inappropriately or in any way that could be considered grooming. These DMs were posted by the burner without my permission and without ever contacting me beforehand. They were sent to the burner by a vulnerable person that was upset and being taken advantage of while under the influence of alcohol. I want to be anonymous and stay completely out of this because all of the terrible stuff I've seen happen to everyone mentioned on both sides is very scary. This conversation was private in my life and no one deserves to have their personal life dug through because of anonymous people making false claims without knowledge or context about anything they're saying. This person was not involved at all. When Dream found out about the burner posting about him, he made a tweet talking about how it was essentially unsubstantiated revenge porn, so just untrue revenge porn, fabricated. That's horrible. That's gotta be a crime, it seems like. People took this as an admittance of him moaning in the video when in reality people didn't read the quotations. He was, this guy's bad at communicating, I'm gonna be honest. Been there, been there, really bad at talking. He then states how it has become a trend to fake grooming allegations. There's been fake allegations against his friends like Bad Boy Halo, Sapnap, Carl Jacobs, Ranbu, Wilbur Soot, and pretty much all Minecraft creators. People love jumping to conclusions in the Minecraft community. And if you believe that all these other people are innocent, why would you believe that the dream allegations are any different? Is, is it because he was, he was chubby as a kid? Is it because he sings? poorly? Is it because he does thirst traps? Anyway, Dream goes through the amount of fake allegations that he's had to deal with, and it is a ridiculous list. Of course, according to him, all of them were disproved for various reasons, but they all showed fake evidence from different socials. Then, in an epic 180, this man calls out XQC, telling him to come forward about 
screenshots of text messages. And then it calls out Pokimane for her cookie drama. Look at this insane, insane fucking tweet. And then he says, well, these are fake messages. He did it in just in a couple minutes using CapCut and other shit that he downloaded on his phone. You can fake stuff online. It's so easy to fake things. And in my opinion, this is the best point that this motherfucker makes in his video. XQC, I know you're probably watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say for yourself? It's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second phone. Prove to me you didn't send me this video. <laughs> or, you're a pervert. Forever. And everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokimane. You've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently. And I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me. And I think that's disgusting. What do you have to say for yourself? What more proof do you need? I also have the cookies she sent me and a signed note from her. This is irrefutable evidence. You get the point. I made all of those pieces of evidence in 10 minutes with only free programs. What's stopping anyone from going and making a fresh account, faking evidence, and then accusing a person they hate of something vile? Be careful what you believe and ask questions. Believing real victims is important, but not believing fake victims is very important to real victims too. After this, I saw so many accounts going viral sharing the screenshot of Pokimane's cookie uh, message, thinking that it was real or just, I mean, it's so stupid. It really, really, truly is a, uh, a fucked up world we live in. And I think this is a really good example of a apology video uh, in the modern era. It still feels very odd to me, the sort of art diorama thing, the incredibly high production value nature of it. Because he's right, it isn't just drama. These are like serious allegations. I have no idea what I would do in his shoes, especially with the lack of vindication. You're just being harangued constantly and there's no way to defend yourself. Every time you defend yourself, people twist it because they just don't like you. Because you were chubby as a kid and you sing funny or something. I fucking have no idea. It's really interesting though, this entire situation is really, really, really interesting. And I wanna know exactly what you guys think about it below. What is your sort of conclusion? Dream's conclusion is this. As for my conclusion on this video, I have a couple things to say. First of all, I, I just wanna recognize that I'm probably in this position because of myself. The people that made these claims undoubtedly had unhealthy parasocial relationships with me, and that's why it's gotten to this point. I want to and will do anything I can to denounce this. My view on fans has shifted slowly over time, jumping massively when I face revealed and actually got to meet fans in person, which made things much more real and massively changed my perspective. I think it's incredibly unhealthy to be obsessive with someone, and I also think that it's clear to anyone that's stepping back and looking at these situations that people obsessively hate me and are making up lies about me, which is also because of parasocialness. Parasocial love turned to parasocial hate. And I have no doubt that the anonymous people making these fake allegations were once big fans of mine. He doesn't stand with his stands anymore. He clarifies that parasocial type relationships are not healthy and they need to be watched. He recognizes that it's his own fault and that he's fed into it a lot. And because of sort of this, there's a, a flip side. He also has parasocial haters and that's people like me who just been hating on this motherfucker. Dream then clarifies his boundaries with NSFW art of him. He says it didn't bother him or his friends before before, but knowing now that these people are drawing them uh, in minors is disgusting, and that is absolutely true. He says serious shipping is unhealthy and bad. It's pretty disgusting. He has to clarify that him and his friend George aren't dating just in, ca in case people were confused about that. One, I don't support any sexually explicit art of me or my friends. It never bothered me personally that much because I don't really care about anything, but it is just weird, especially if you're a minor and drawing anything like that. That's gross. I don't support anything inappropriate for minors at all. Art. TikToks, comments, anything, it's gross. Two, serious shipping is bad. I think that prying into people's private relationships, being deeply speculative or anything like that is terrible. I don't mind jokes, I don't mind doing it for fun, but anything serious really crosses the line. Again, I've always found it funny being shipped with George because we're not dating and we're friends. But if you genuinely think that we are dating and it's part of your personality or you obsess over it, you need to get off the internet. That is not healthy. So you heard it here first, guys. George not found and dream was taken are not dating. He says, don't obsess over him. It's unhealthy. Don't be a stalker. Don't be a fan, even just be a viewer. He then says he'll have someone else running his Twitter while he steps away for a while. And he's going to focus on content and just being a content creator and, and sort of being healthy over the holidays, etc. He doesn't want this whole thing to be a negative. He wants it to be a positive. He wants to move away from the horrors of Twitter and not insert himself into senseless drama anymore and be the internet's punching bag. Kind of based, kind of red-pilled, I'm going to be honest.
I think this is the biggest W that Dream has had in a very long time. This video, it's pretty solid. It's pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Very long, very well articulated video from Dream. I think he does everything he possibly could to dismantle a lot of the things that have been said about him, at least the most pertinent things. Um, I think it's weird as that he waited so long to come forward about all this stuff. But with the whole gumball thing, it sort of makes sense why he had to speak up now because it's just gone too far. Be cool if he took his own advice, it'd be interesting. Uh, there's also more drama um, that recently came out, more allegations, I think, and there's probably maybe more that's gonna come out of this. I don't know, I really don't know, dude. There are a lot of people who are willing to accept his explanations in his video, and I'm sure there's just as many, if not more, who are not going to, who are just going to ignore the truth and continue making fun of Dream. I personally will continue making fun of Dream, but I think that the response to these things that he's had, solid. I really do, I genuinely believe that. I don't know if that makes me a fucking weirdo. It does feel weird, I've gotta say, and quite frankly, I think there are some uh, rocks that need to be overturned. Specifically, in the description of his video, he mentions that content creators can reach out to him to talk to some of the people that he uses as sort of character references in his video, and I'm gonna do that. I wanna try to communicate with these people and really find out from third parties whether or not uh, this is all valid and above board. It seems like it is. I sent him a DM. We'll see. I think if we could have communications from the professor who wrote the paper supporting Dream Speedrun, Manitree's ex-girlfriend, the person who was abused, his Snapchat slash fan art page manager, prior manager in 2020, and the person who was in the car with Dream and Nick Cantu, if we could talk to them without Dream being there, just like as a pure third party with nothing going on, I think this would all be uh, nipped in the bud 100% and people would believe him. Anyways, let me know what you guys think.